All right, friends, welcome into another Mercado Airwaves Q&A. Thank you so much for joining us again. If you didn't join us the last time, it's pretty simple. We go around the internet and we find what you guys are talking about and we try to answer them the best to our ability. We do that by going on Twitter, on Facebook, all over social media, and we hope you guys enjoyed it. We've been getting some good feedback from you guys from our last episode, and uh, like always, we really appreciate all the support. Before we get to the questions, here is a quick message. Hey friends, Mike here from Outreach Radio Chicago and Mercado Airways. I am so excited to let you in on a new service we are providing. If you or someone you know has an upstart or established business and company and would like to do some marketing on various platforms, you can do that right now by becoming an official sponsor and power all our interviews with athletes and celebrities. We assure quality audio in the beginning and ending of our interviews that will spotlight your amazing business and help bring in as much traffic as possible to all your outlets. From award-winning celebrities, Sundance Film Darling Director David Ferrier joins us. Appreciate you having me on the show. To world champion athletes, UFC bantamweight champion Dominic Cruz. Dominic, how you doing, buddy? I'm great. How are you, Mike? We promise you the absolute best from the entire staff of Mercado Airways. For more information, visit us on patreon.com slash Mercado Airways. Follow us on Twitter at mmercado2333. Subscribe to us on youtube.com slash Mike Mercado2333. Like the radio show page on Facebook at Outreach Radio Chicago. Follow us on Instagram, Mike Mercado2333. And visit the website, Mercado Airways. WordPress.com. Thank you for listening and all the support. Let's get right into it. Okay, first one is from Darth Spider One One Seven. Do you think a live-action theatrical Halo, the video game movie adaptation, would work? I mean, could it work? Sure. Uh, you know, here's the thing though: it's not that video game movies can't succeed or that they can't be good. I mean. You know, Assassin's Creed obviously didn't do as well or good at all that many fans were hoping for. But, you know, it's like any other movie. It's something that with the right amount of talent, with the right people put together, you might be able to do something. But if you're just hoping to go off name brand alone, it's like anything It's like anything at all. It's what you're putting yourself into it. So without the proper director, without the right type of screenplay and, you know, the right type of investment from the company, I don't know if any movie can be successful um i'm gonna check something really fast it's not like halo hasn't always had that kind of that feel that it's gonna make its move to the big screen there have been talks already about con uh about scripts being written and it going into pre-production i mean at one point peter jackson was uh, attached to produce it neil blumkamp was attached to direct it so obviously right there they had that feel of of uh, fantasy and sci-fi so you know halo's always had that weird feel to it that yeah there is a potential great movie in there but we have saw it with warcraft we've seen it with assassin's creed we've seen it with m- almost every video game movie it's it's not it, it, the translation between video game and movie is so difficult a video game is interactive. It's 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 your story. It's you playing it. A movie is a story being told to you. And I think it's always a weird mixture of the two. Um, how much the storytelling belong in video games, and how much uh, you know audience interaction does a movie have, like the three D or any of those type of things. Um, so just in general, I really would love to see a Halo movie. Obviously, I'm a huge fan of the Halo series. To see that in a big screen, to having a great actor, you know, just for example, Aaron Taylor Johnson, something like that, that could could really lose himself in a role. Master Chief is a great character, but whether or not it would succeed, and it's like any other movie, the right not getting a, a bad director, a bad script, uh, bad acting, and the movie could suck like Assassin's Creed. And even then, it has great actors, and you can see what a bad... What a bad movie could do, make people look like. This one's from Carping About. Should they recast Leia in episode 9? I would choose Streep or Annette Benning. Um, alright, well, yeah, so that's, I guess, the, the, the elephant in the room is what they're going to do with Princess Leia moving on in episode 8 and episode 9 uh, after the passing of Carrie Fisher. So, here's the thing, right? They've already finished up episode 8. So... Everything now that's already been wrapped up. That's 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 in the bank. Now it is what's going to happen in episode nine. So if she makes it out of episode eight, if General Leia, you know, survives episode eight into episode nine, what do Lucas Films and Disney do from there? That's a tough one, right? Like you can't imagine anybody but Carrie Fisher playing a role. But if she's and Colin Trevorrow has come out to talk about how important she is, she's going to be in his story. And Ryan Johnson has came out to 
to talk about how he, how important she is in his story of episode eight and Tavaro working on episode nine. You would think that if, if she's important to the story, whether she's Ray's mom or Ray's mentor, or she has something to do with the, uh, defeating Snoke and defeating the Dark Side again, I don't think you have much of a choice but to recast for General Leia. I mean, that's the unfortunate truth of, of these characters aren't forever linked to their actors. I mean, you know, yeah, I get it. It's going to be hard to see somebody else play Han Solo, but the fact is, is they're having another Han Solo. And the, there's been different James Bond. There's been different Batman. It, 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 it happens, and it's sad. And But that's life. That's the tragedy. That's the beauty of it. And if, if Princess Leia, General Leia, is important to Episode Nine, you have no choice. And spoiler alert for Rogue One, I don't necessarily think seeing somebody like Tarkin and Peter Cushing and the CGI works for a whole movie. We've seen it. I mean, whether it's Ant-Man or a, a Civil War with Robert Downey Jr. and Michael Douglas, you don't see the technology is not there yet. I mean, it might be there for episode nine, but I wouldn't risk it. I would recast as hard as it is, as much as we don't want to think about it. If General Leia is that important for episode nine, yeah, I don't think you have much of a choice. Here's another movie one. While we all hate remakes, that's not true. I, I enjoy remakes. Uh, nothing wrong with remakes. But uh, while we all hate remakes, what movie do you like but actually want to be remade? That one's from at Box Office Jack. Um, a movie that I want to see be remade. Man, that is a tough one to go with. A movie I would love to see get remade. Okay, I'll tell you a, uh, a guilty pleasure one of mine. It's Sylvester Stallone and Wesley Snipes' Demolition Man. There you go. It's it's a movie. It's old enough, over 20 years old. It's a cool sci-fi uh, idea of a, of a cop getting uh, blamed for crimes because of this man that he's been chasing. And they, they freeze him and he wakes up in the future and you know, all this craziness ensues. And it's, it's so, such a typical 90s action movie and I love it. It reminds me of my father. We, we get a kick out of it. But I, if you haven't checked out Demolition Man underrated action film but you talk about something that i would get a kick out of i mean if you made total recall a remake you could totally make this one into it so demolition man for sure pugs 25 what are your thoughts on jimmy butler to the 76ers for jaleel okafor and norlens noel and two first round picks all right well i don't think their bulls are going to trade jimmy butler to begin with i think that's that's a pipe dream i don't think that's ever going to happen but just in general i mean that's very um no, I don't. I don't think that trade would happen. I personally, I, I think the Bulls are in a very weird situation. They're they're in a place that's worse than being bad. They're mediocre, and mediocre is worse because you're so much further from winning in both instances. You're not bad enough to get a good player in the draft. You're not good enough to win a championship. So I don't think trading for Noel's for a Jaleel Okafor or Norland's Noel do anything. I don't necessarily think it's good for Jaleel Okafor to come back to Chicago. Uh, he's had a hard time over in Philadelphia. I don't think coming back home is going to solve that. There might be more distractions, distractions there. Um, I don't know exactly what Philadelphia has been doing. They've won a few games, but uh, no, if I'm the Bulls, I'm asking for the the moon and back. And I mean, it, it's a nice trade, but I don't. I think I don't think this is a trade that that helps the Bulls anywhere. I don't think that helps them get any closer to a championship. Oh, here we go. Here's for your wrestling fans. This one's from a cheery critish. Sorry for butchering you, bro. Uh, which brand will the Royal Rumble winner come from? SmackDown Live or Raw? All right, so here we go. The Royal Rumble. It's been two weeks. Mm. So you have AJ going in as champion for SmackDown. Kevin Owens going in as champion for Raw. Both have title matches at the Royal Rumble. You have Undertaker who's in the Rumble. You have Miz... Ambrose, the betting favorite right now in the Vegas line is Undertaker. So I think that's an easy one to go to. Oh, you have Brock Lesnar and Goldberg also uh, in the Royal Rumble. Um, I'm going to go Finn Balor. I will go surprise. I think Raw's Finn Balor will win and will probably challenge. Mm. Mm. No, now we're going to get into storytelling stuff. Ah, man. Because I guess in theory, you're going to have... Seth Rollins versus Triple H at WrestleMania. Goldberg versus Lesnar at WrestleMania. Um, what does Reigns do? Because Kevin Owens will go against Chris Jericho. So I would assume if Roman Reigns wins the title, takes the title off of Kevin Owens in the title match, that he might face Finn Balor. And there was a little heat going into that, heading into uh, 
when the Universal Championship tournament was going on. So I'll go Finn Balor from Funzel Gaming. Will there be any big name characters in Resident Evil 7? So Resident Evil 7 comes out in a in a few days, I think next Tuesday. Uh, super excited. One of my favorite franchises in video games. Uh, I'm a huge video game nerd. And uh, Resident Evil going into this first-person perspective, going back to its horror uh, background and and definitely going back into what made it so popular. Um, will a famous character from or a big name character in the lore already show up? Uh, well, if you play the demo, you see like the the spoilers. If you play the demo, the playable demo uh, that leads into the story, you you find you see a, a a postcard or a picture that has an Umbrella Corporation logo on a helicopter. So obviously, Umbrella Umbrella is back at it, but. Um, I don't think you'll see somebody like Leon. I don't think you'll see someone like Chris Redfield. Uh, I do think you'll see somebody in there, though, kind of put the pieces together. I guess this takes place six or seven years after Resident Evil 6. So it's still in the the universe. It's still in the timeline. But I don't think you'll see any of the main ones. Dark Horse, you will see, you will see Claire Redfield. Dark Horse. But... I am so excited for Resident Evil 7, and when we finish that, we will have a review up about that, and uh, I'm actually finishing up Uncharted 4, we just got a uh, a PlayStation 4 for Christmas, thanks to uh, Nicole, so hopefully I'll have a review up of that as well. Hey friends, Mike here from Outreach Radio Chicago and Mercado Airways. I am so excited to let you in on a new service we are providing. If you or someone you know has an upstart or established business and company and would like to do some marketing on various platforms, you can do that right now by becoming an official sponsor and power all our interviews with athletes and celebrities. We assure quality audio in the beginning and ending of our interviews that will spotlight your amazing business and help bring in as much traffic as possible to all your outlets. From award-winning celebrities, Sundance Film Darling Director David Ferrier joins us. Appreciate you having me on the show. To world champion athletes, UFC bantamweight champion Dominic Cruz. Dominic, how you doing, buddy? I'm great. How are you, Mike? We promise you the absolute best from the entire staff of Mercado Airways. For more information, visit us on patreon.com slash Mercado Airways. Follow us on Twitter at mmercado2333. Subscribe to us on youtube.com slash Mike Mercado2333. Like the radio show page on Facebook at Outreach Radio Chicago. Follow us on Instagram, Mike Mercado2333. And visit the website, mercadoairways.wordpress.com. Thank you for listening and all the support. This is a message I got from Adam Mergen. Shout out, Adam. Thank you for all the work that you've done for us back when we were doing the wrestling podcast uh, for drawing those cool pictures. So uh, hope you're doing well, brother. Thank you. All right. I've been sort of perplexed on this steer towards younger head coaching in the NFL and beyond. With the Rams hire of Sean McVay at 31 years old, do you think this is going to be something that will transcend over all major sports? With coaching vacancies happening left and right, are we seeing sports being okay with gambling on people with such short merit? Mm, that is a very interesting, uh, uh, very interesting question in general. I think it, it goes bigger than sports. Just this idea that you can't be afraid to uh, to give the reins to somebody young. You do you do you put an age limit on talent? Here's the thing, though. It's like I don't know if McVeigh is going to have that much success over in Los Angeles for the Rams. Fact is, is we don't know anything about his quarterback in golf. Is he worth the number one draft pick? Do is there enough talent around him? Does he evaluate talent well enough to put it to execute his game plan? That's always the bottom line. I think age is beyond all that. It's the talent that's surrounded by you, specifically in sports. I mean, we're seeing, seeing it now with Shanahan becoming the coach of the 49ers, leaving Atlanta, another young NFL coach. So, I mean, when Mike Tomlin became the coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers, he was he was a pup. And that was a huge thing. And, they, and now what? They, he's won two Super Bowls with them and on their way to another a- AFC championship game. I think it's a very interesting t- subject. And I think it's a, uh, a hot take type of thing of, you know, what does this mean? It's the game changing that they're bringing in younger coaches. I just think you have to win now. And the game is evolving. And the, uh, the, the counter to that is somebody like John Fox in the 60s has been in the NFL, has survived, has won games. You've seen it with Jeff Fisher. Is that what the league continue, wants to continue doing? You, The game has to evolve, regardless of football or any sport. And I think you're seeing that even in baseball where managers don't ride the buses anymore in the minor leagues. They they retired. For example, David Ross, in four or five years when Joe Mann is gone, he will be the, the manager of the Chicago Cubs. I'm certain of it. 
We've seen it with Mike Matheny over in St. Louis. It happens. Joe Girardi with the Yankees and Marlins. Uh, catchers and 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 Major League Baseball, they just they translate better into into coaches. You saw it with Jason Kidd in the NBA. Uh, uh, Derek Fisher had his struggles, but people translate. And when you've played and and you have the respect of your players, and you could put a execute a game plan. I don't think age matters. I think that time has come and gone, and we could do. We've seen analytics become such a big part of all of sports that I don't know if it makes a difference whether or not you can't put a price on. You can't put a price on on experience, but maybe we're at that point now where age is just a number. I really want to know what you guys think. Uh, let us know in the comments section below. Thank you for that question, Adam. That was a good one. All right, let's take a few more. You guys have been awesome. Uh, thank you again for all the support you guys are giving us by uh, uh, using the hashtag Mercado Airwaves Q and A on all social media platforms. Thank you guys for leaving your questions. Um, Christian Simpson, uh, do you miss me, man? Yes, I do. Keep doing your thing at the Daily Blitz, brother. Uh, um, keep watching them football and keep your nose to the grind, man. Thank you for all the support. Um, this one's from Michael Cooley. Uh, Bears. Should the Bears go for Jimmy Garoppolo or Tony Romo or draft somebody? Um, I would love to get Rolling Meadows native uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, but uh, I think New England, the rumor is, is they're asking for two first-round draft picks. I don't know. You have so many other needs. I would love to get a quarterback like Jimmy Garoppolo, but he might end up being the next Matt Castle or Matt Flynn. I don't know. That's a risky one. I think they're asking for a lot. Yeah, I think if the price was right, I would go for him in a heartbeat. But if, you know, the rumors are true, what they're asking for, I think it's just too much. Tony Romo is interesting. I think with Tony Romo, it's a sexy name. The problem is, for me personally, is he's just a broken Jake Cutler. And Cutler's already broken as it is. But you're, you're, it's the same tier of quarterback. Are you moving forward? It's, it, it's essentially the same thing with the Bulls organization where you need to get worse before you get better. And I don't think... Going for Tony Romo does that. I think it's a sideways move. And uh, I think Tony Romo wants to win somewhere. So you could see him end up going to like Arizona. I think that'd be really interesting. Or obviously Denver is another big one. Maybe even Houston. And then your other option was draft someone. Yeah, I mean with the third with the third pick in the draft, can you justify getting a, uh, a top tier safety, which a lot of people have been wanting them to do, like uh, Peppers from Michigan? I don't know. I If at that pick... I pick best available. You have so many needs, whether it's offensive line, defensive line, linebacker, wide receiver, depending on what you're going to do with Alshon Jeffrey and if Kevin White ever gets on the field. Um, yeah, I mean, I think you draft someone. I think you try to pull what the, uh, what the Oakland Raiders did with Amari Cooper and Derek Carr, try to get a first-round pick and a second-round pick and, and knock out two birds. You could only be so, so lucky. But uh, the Bears are in trouble, Mike. The Bears are definitely in trouble. Thank you, Cooley, for that, that question. All right, here's the, the last one from uh, one of my best friends, Andrew Lonsky. Thank you for uh, leaving a question, man. Does Jimmy Butler have a real chance to win the MVP? He has a chance to be nominated. He has a chance to be in the discussion. The Bulls are bad. Bulls are bad. And now uh, we're going to get a high draft pick bad. They're a bad, bad team. And he's the best player on that team. But... In a league that has Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, James Harden, LeBron James, uh, I'm going to butcher his name, but Ate Contempo from Milwaukee, I I don't see it. I, I think Jimmy is a hell of a player. I think Jimmy is a hell of a trade asset. I think Jimmy is a hell of an asset to begin with, has worked his tail off, has become better than anybody could ever imagine. I don't think he's top 10 in the league. I mean, he, he's one of the best two-way players in the league, and you always got to give him that. He's an all-star. But, man, it, it's hard for me to say that he's the MVP. He's having a great season, though. I mean, he really is. But I, I almost out of necessity like Kevin Love was when he was in Minnesota. Somebody's got to get the points. All right, then Andy asks, what is the movie this year that has the best chance to beat Star Wars Episode Eight at the box office? Okay, uh, this one's this is a question that's been going around the internet a little bit. You have Justice League, Wonder Woman, Guardians of the Galaxy, Part Two, Spider Man: Homecoming, Alien Covenant, Logan, Justice League, Beauty and the Beast. 
Despicable Me 3. Those are just the ones that have uh, King Kong, Skull Island. So all of these movies, oh my goodness, the one that always makes over a billion dollars in Transformers. All right. I will say the movie that will beat, not just come close, but will beat Star Wars Episode Eight at the box office, Beauty and the Beast. Now, talk about nostalgia. It's right at the right time, right at the right age group. Just enough people in that age group have had kids or going to have kids. Their parents are old enough to go by themselves not worried about their kids. It hits so many demographics. It hits so many people's nostalgia. And the, the movie looks phenomenal. Uh, Nicole and I just went to go see La La Land, which another amazing movie. We'll, um, we'll do a, a review on that one soon. But um, I was moved by it. It, over, it overcame me. It, it it's epic. It looks the cast is phenomenal. Um, yeah, I, I think in in no in, in this order, I think it will be Beauty and the Beast. In, in the uh, first, let's do the rankings of the the closest the, the movies are gonna have the best chance to dethroning Episode Eight this coming up year. I think will be Beauty and the Beast, Guardians of the Galaxy Two. Spider-Man Homecoming. And a dark horse will be Transformers. Star Wars will finish number two, though. And the last one from Andy. Andy got, uh, did a triple header. Thank you, man. I appreciate the content. Uh, rumor has it there's a chance of another DC comic show joining the Arrowverse. Who should be introduced? Now, there is already a rumor that Berlanti, who runs the, the universe of the TV shows, is working on a Blue Beetle either film or going to work into adaptation. Now, if you watch... The CW universe, first of all, I love, love The Flash. I think it is my favorite show on that universe. I love uh, DC's Legends of Tomorrow. Um, I kind of fell off of Arrow. Arrow has uh, had a nice comeback. but uh, And Supergirl. Supergirl is really good. I personally want to see the person they brought into Supergirl Season 2, and that's Superman. I think Superman is ready for a cool adaptation in the TV world. Now, Tyler Hoechlin, the, uh, the, the, the guy who plays Clark Kent Superman, uh, he was in uh, Teen Wolf. He is awesome. He looks like Clark Kent. He acts like Clark Kent. He, he, hold him, he holds himself with a, a, a strong presence, but also very comforting in a way you would think Superman is. His chemistry with Supergirl is, you know, top notch. I, I really, 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 really want to see a lighter tone of Superman. I think Henry Cavill and Man of Steel are phenomenal. I think they're they have their place in the big screen. But when you're watching shows like Flash and Green Arrow, and you know you're never gonna get Batman, which I would love, that idea of Superman being back on television, that comfort of him being there, uh, I would love to see the potential storylines of uh, a better version of Smallville. You know, not not having you know, unlike Peter Parker, unlike Spider Man. Some of Superman's greatest stories are of him as an adult figuring himself out as an as a man, as a hero. And you could do that as long as, you know, you, you keep to the characteristics that uh, Hoechlin has brought into the Supergirl universe. But um, another one would be Constantine. I think Constantine was so underrated on NBC and I would love to see him get a second chance, a second life in the CW universe. The CW Universe is, is kicking ass, and I'm excited to see what else they do. But that'll do it for us, guys. Thank you. This was a really fun uh, Q&A. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you, everybody who, at, who, who submitted any questions, and thank you to everybody for all the support you guys have given us. We're everywhere in the universe. I'm on Twitter at Mercado2333. Follow me on Instagram, Mike Mercado2333. Subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash Mike Mercado2333. I'm on Facebook, Michelangelo Mercado, and the radio shows on Facebook at Outreach Radio Chicago. Do us a huge favor. You've heard the commercials. Visit us on patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves and check out all the cool offers that we have there, like our offer to hear all of our interviews with celebrities and UFC superstars ad-free and before anybody else on social media. Check that out, guys, and visit the website, MercadoAirwaves.wordpress.com.
outreachradio.com. Thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you next time. Hey, friends, Mike here from Outreach Radio Chicago and Mercado Airways. I am so excited to let you in on a new service we are providing. If you or someone you know has an upstart or established business and company and would like to do some marketing on various platforms, you can do that right now by becoming an official sponsor and power all our interviews with athletes and celebrities. We assure quality audio in the beginning and ending of our interviews that will spotlight your amazing business and help bring in as much traffic as possible to all your outlets. From award-winning celebrities, Sundance Film Darling Director David Ferrier joins us. Appreciate you having me on the show. To world champion athletes, UFC bantamweight champion Dominic Cruz. Dominic, how you doing, buddy? I'm great. How are you, Mike? We promise you the absolute best from the entire staff of Mercado Airways. For more information, visit us on patreon.com slash Mercado Airways. Follow us on Twitter at mmercado2333. Subscribe to us on youtube.com slash Mike Mercado2333. Like the radio show page on Facebook at Outreach Radio Chicago. Follow us on Instagram, Mike Mercado2333. And visit the website, mercadoairways.wordpress.com. Thank you for listening and all the support.